Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. Um, you'll want your Bible handy because we're going to look at a, quite a few places. Um, we'll be in Romans a lot uh, and the book of Acts. 1 Corinthians, Acts, Romans. Uh, that's where a lot of the Apostle Paul uh, and his acts are recorded. Uh, but Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, is one place that records the Apostle Paul as that, an apostle. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So thus far, we've looked at the 12 men that Jesus chose originally to be his disciples, to be his apostles. But in this lesson, we're going to consider a man who initially rejected Christ, different than the other apostles. Jesus said, follow me, and what does it say? Immediately they arose and followed him. But this man originally was a Pharisee. Uh, he rejected Christ, but yet, uh, and persecuted Christians. But uh, after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus, he, uh, he repented. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And, and Jesus said, I'll show you what I want you to do. And then he faithfully did it. So we're going to look, first of all, at Paul's background the Bible doesn't give us much uh, concerning the Apostle Paul's family, but we do know a lot of things, and I'm going to just share a few things that we know about him uh, from Scripture. First of all, we know that he was unmarried, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and verse 8 says, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Uh, the fact that Paul was unmarried allowed him flexibility to travel and devote himself to, uh, to holy, to ministry and teaching in a way that a man who had a family uh, wouldn't have been able to. <clears throat> Nowadays, with modern technology, with modern travel, think of people like uh, Brother Michael Williams, uh, Brother Jason Dover. They're able to uh, take trips to a foreign country for uh, very, very quickly, uh, go around the world in, in less than 24 hours on a plane, able to do some work for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and then come back to their family, still support them financially, still be there for them. The Apostle Paul, of course, uh, that means of travel wasn't available to him. So for a man who was supporting a wife and a family to leave for six months, a year at a time, uh, to go on a ship, to go to a different country, possibly because of the way, you know, travel was very uh, unstable back then, maybe not be back for a couple of years, that wouldn't have been uh, wise or possible for him to do uh, if he were married or taking care of family. So the fact that he was unmarried allowed him some flexibility, be able to do some things as a missionary, uh, as an apostle that other uh, men maybe wouldn't have been able to do. But Paul then goes on to say in uh, that chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians uh, and verse 17 that we ought to each be willing to do what God has uh, for us to do. So he said, I'm unmarried. It allows me to do some things that married folks wouldn't be able to do, but I think everyone ought to follow what God wants them to do. And this is what he says, but as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. So the Apostle Paul wasn't saying, do as I do. He was saying, do as God asks you to do, and whatever that is, uh, that'll be best. We also know about the Apostle Paul, that he was born in Tarsus. He then moved to Jerusalem, and he received religious training. Turn to Acts chapter 22 and verse 3. This would be a very important verse uh, that gives us much insight into the life of the Apostle Paul. Acts 22 and verse 3. <clears throat> what does Paul say about himself? I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, which is modern-day Turkey. If you want to look that up on a map, that's where Paul was from. Yet brought up in this city, talking about Jerusalem, at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous towards God, as ye all are this day. Paul uh, was that what shows us where he was born, where he lived, and the teaching that he received. We'll see in another verse, uh, Gamaliel was a teacher. He really was a doctor in the law and the things of the law. So he had a great religious and uh, educational background. Paul possessed Roman citizenship. In Romans chapter 22, verse 27, the Bible says, Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. 
And Paul said, but I was uh, free born. So the apostle Paul uh, had Roman citizenship. Paul was born in Tarsus. So that means that his Roman citizenship would not have come from him, but it would have had to be passed down uh, to him through his father. The, Roman ca or the, the captain said, I had to pay a large sum of money to get my Roman citizenship. How did you get yours? And Paul said, I was born free. So Paul was born, Paulus was born with Roman citizenship, had to come from his father. So how did P Paul's father obtain Roman citizenship not being a Roman citizen? There are a couple options uh, or possibilities. One would have been uh, slaves who were slaves of a Roman master who were then freed would have Roman citizenship. So it could have been that Paul's father was a slave to a Roman master. Paul's father was then freed and made a free man and therefore would have become a Roman citizen. That's a possibility. Or um, non-ethnic Romans but living and residing in a Roman colony after a time could have been made Roman citizen. So that's a possibility of how Ro uh, Paul gained his Roman citizenship through his father. Paul, as we mentioned just a moment ago, he had a first-class education, uh, not only in religion, but also in literature and by his writings that we read in Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, uh, 1 and 2 Corinthians, uh, the book of Romans, we see that he was well-versed in debate. So all of these things that he learned, all this education that he had, uh, he was very smart and he was well-rounded in his education. Uh, he learned, of course, by uh, the man Gamaliel, who studied Jewish law. If you wanted to see a uh, verse or a reference for um, basically Gamaliel's um, credentials, that would be Acts chapter 5 and verse 34. Paul also was a tent maker by trade. Um, you see here, Paul was, he was very well-rounded. And you say, well, how could someone who's well-learned, uh, who's a Jew, uh, who lives in Jerusalem, how also would he be a tent maker by trade? I thought of, similar to myself, um, I could say uh, that I am a roofer or a, a shingle layer by trade. I don't do it as my full-time job, but I have done enough of it to where I could very easily uh, do it as a full-time job, uh, doing it on the side. Uh, Paul in Acts chapter 18 verse 2 says, And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So the apostle Paul made tents. I don't know what kind of tents, but uh, uh, tents by Paul or Paul's tents could have been a side hustle that he had to earn some money. Almost done here looking at Paul's background, but his name, of course, his Hebrew name, we know, we know Saul to Paul, and we teach that in, in uh, like kids' junior church all the time. Hebrew name was Saul, which means desired. His Roman name was Paulus, uh, which means small or little. After his conversion, these names were used interchangeably. The Bible says in Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Then said Saul, parentheses, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. So that's a little bit about Paul and his background, maybe some things that we didn't know uh, before. Paul's call. We know, of course, that Paul uh, met Christ on the road to Damascus, and we uh, talk about that conversion often. We meet the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 7. That's our first uh, meeting with him, and we find that in verse 58. And it says, And cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. So this is at the stoning of Stephen. And the apostle Paul, then known as Saul, was there. As an act of Pharisee, uh, the, uh, Paul um, went further than just trying to keep the law. Uh, religiously, as many of the Pharisees did, but he took it a step further, and he was actively persecuting uh, the early church and the early Christians. He was present here at Stephen's death, verse 59, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon, calling upon God. Stephen was, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The Apostle Paul was actively imprisoning men and women 
uh, that were sharing their faith in Christ. Acts chapter 8, verse 3 confirms that. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison. So that word, uh, it's H-A-L-I-N-G, uh, very similar to the word hauling, and that's about what it means. He was, it means to drag or to draw in, literally pulling believers to be persecuted. So that was the Apostle Paul. But then Paul uh, has a meeting with Jesus Christ. God comes to him, and that meeting, of course, uh, changes his life forever. That would be Acts chapter 9, uh, verse 5, the very familiar passage. And, uh, and uh, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. That was Paul's conversion, and after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul's life was never the same. And uh, he would, then, from that point forward, was no longer uh, doing what he wanted to do, no longer following the law, no longer following men, but followed only Christ. And that would take him to some places, some undesirable places, through some persecution. Uh, but Paul, uh, after meeting Christ, knew that there was nothing uh, more that he was supposed to do with his life than follow Christ. Paul's faith, um, we talked about this pretty extensively uh, in looking at Galatians, Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 through 24, where Paul shares his testimony and he is uh, really giving a defense for the gospel. So we won't dig too deep into this, but we do know that the Apostle Paul trusted Christ for salvation and he shared his testimony uh, with others. Paul's ministry, what did Paul do as after uh, meeting Christ on the road to Damascus. He did a lot. Uh, but in general, we can boil it down to a few things. First of all, he preached the gospel. And um, Paul shared the gospel everywhere he went. He traveled to places uh, that had never heard uh, the gospel before. Romans chapter 15 and verse 20 says this, Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel. Not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. So the Apostle Paul preached the gospel everywhere he went, and that meant it was preached to people who had heard of Christ, uh, maybe to the Jews who had rejected Christ, but also to the Gentiles, the people that had never heard, and Paul was making sure that everyone had opportunity to hear of Christ. So Paul's ministry, of course, centrally uh, was uh, wrapped around preaching the gospel, but also he tested doctrine. Paul helped a new and deviant churches to stay on track uh, to preach the true gospel of Christ. Think about it. Early believers didn't have a New Testament. The New Testament was not uh, fully compiled in its canon. Well, think about during the, the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Uh, some of the, the Bible had not even been written yet because Paul was still going to be writing some of the New Testament through inspiration of the Holy Ghost by letters to the churches. So the New Testament church, early church, didn't have the whole New Testament. They didn't say, hmm, I wonder if that's what we should be doing at church. Let's look at the New Testament. They didn't have that. They were living the New Testament. So the Apostle Paul was helping him stay on track and saying, listen, this is not what Christ wants us to do. Yep, keep doing what you're doing. This is what Christ would want us to do. Um, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you would see uh, just one example of where um, Paul is just setting things in order and saying, listen, uh, I'm going to help keep you on track. Um, also, uh, Paul remained loyal to God through many different circumstances. If you want to have a little Bible study uh, tomorrow and uh, Friday and Saturday, I'm going to give you a little outline of things uh, that came into Paul's life, uh, and he still stayed faithful to God through these things. Paul remained loyal in spite of uh, beatings that he received. Uh, we would find record of those in Acts chapter 16, verse 37 and also in Acts chapter 21, verse 32. Paul remained loyal to God through imprisonment. We would find that in Acts chapter 16, verse 24, Acts chapter 23, verse 18, and Acts chapter 24, verse 27. 
Paul remained faithful to God during slander uh, from others. We would find an instance of that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 9 through 13. He stayed faithful to God through persecution from the religious crowd uh, in Acts chapter 21, verses 27 and 28. He stayed faithful to God through threat of death in Acts chapter 26, verse 21. He stayed faithful to God through personal struggles in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7, and through abandonment in Philippians 4, 15, and 2 Timothy 4, 10. By God's grace, nothing could deter the Apostle Paul from serving Christ and telling others about him. And it really stands to reason, right? Because the Apostle Paul knew who he was. He knew the life that he lived before he gave his life to Christ, before he met him on Damascus Road, right? He was persecuting Christians. Paul said, uh, sinner, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, there's a lot of sinners, but I'm the chief. I'm the worst one, and I know where I'm at. But by the grace of God, I'm able to do what I do, and I am who I am. The Apostle Paul knew that, and he knew how gracious God had been to him. And so I think he decided that regardless of the things and the difficulties and the places that he was that came into his life, he was going to follow God regardless, because it really was the least he could do uh, after the grace that God had showed him. Paul's qualification as, a, as an apostle. Uh, we need no more qualification than the fact that the Bible records him as an apostle, but there's many who will say, well, Paul wasn't an apostle. Uh, he may have been a disciple of Christ, just as we are disciples, but an apostle is someone who saw Jesus Christ while he was here on earth, and some of the, uh, these other things. Uh, but Paul meets all the qualifications. He saw Christ after the resurrection. Where did he see him? Um, on Damascus Road, for one. I uh, may also have seen him uh, in other places because G uh, the apostle Paul was a Pharisee. Interesting thought there. He, uh, Paul also was chosen directly by Christ, uh, he received teaching directly from Christ. Um, Paul wrote much of uh, the New Testament, and he fulfilled the duties of an apostle. So the apostle Paul was 100% qualified to be an apostle. Last thing we'll look at here is um, Paul's spiritual gifts. We all are given uh, spiritual gifts, uh, abilities that we are supposed to use, not for our own personal gain, uh, but for the, the body, right? And to build each other up and to edify one another. The Apostle Paul had spiritual gifts. Number one was the gift of healing in Acts chapter 14, verse 9. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Now we know that the Apostle Paul wasn't a god that came down from the heavens. The Apostle Paul was uh, acting through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit that was in him. But the Holy Spirit allowed him to heal. Also, uh, he was able to perform other miracles. Acts chapter 13, verse 9, Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some, some to lead him by the hand. Uh, so the Apostle Paul is able to do some miraculous things. Again, not in his own strength, but through the power of God and the Holy Spirit. Paul also was able to give prophecy. We know, uh, we've said it several times, but he wrote many of the books of the Bible through inspiration. And uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 17, And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. Even that in the uh, Greek means a displacement of the mind. And saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. He was hearing from God there. A prophet. And then lastly, he had the ability to speak in other languages. It's referred to in the New Testament as tongues. Does that mean he was uh, speaking a bunch of gibberish that no one else could understand? No. It's laid out very plainly in the book of 1 Corinthians 14. If there is one who is speaking a bunch of gibberish that nobody can understand, or someone who's speaking, if we had someone who could speak Greek this evening, and he were to get up and be preaching to us in Greek, the Bible says if no one can understand him, have him sit down. 
because there's no profit in someone speaking where no one else can understand. Oftentimes it's uh, said, well, you know, we get filled with the Holy Spirit and we speak with tongues. Speaking a language or gibberish that no one else can understand, I have a hard time believing that that's Holy Spirit led because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to me and he wants me to be able to understand what he's saying. So when Paul is saying here that he can speak in tongues, it doesn't mean that he had this uh, made up language that no one else could understand. He was, had the supernatural ability to understand and to speak in another language that he otherwise wouldn't have the ability to use. 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Does that mean that he uh, did a bunch of weird things? No, it means that God had given him the ability to understand uh, and to speak languages that he otherwise wouldn't be able to use so that he could further the gospel to people who had never heard. So that's just, just uh, in a nutshell, uh, some of the ministry and the life of the Apostle Paul. And uh, I'm thankful uh, for uh, the study of the Apostle Paul because I think we all uh, can... Um, relate to him because the Apostle Paul at one point in time in his life had nothing to do with Christ. He rejected Christ. He was actively working against Jesus. But there came a time where he met Jesus on the road and he said, what do you want me to do, Lord? And we all came to a place in, in time in our lives where we said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And now we're seeking to follow him just as the Apostle Paul did.